Hey, this is Jonathan with the Pi Calendar team. And in this video, I'm gonna show you two different approaches to adding custom code to your WordPress website. In this video, we're gonna cover examples specifically for Pi Calendar, but the exact same approach will work regardless of what plugin or theme you might be trying to modify with a little bit of custom code. So here on this homepage, I have a calendar that's starting on the current month, which is March. But let's say for whatever reason you need the calendar to begin in July. Well, we actually have a support article that can help you with this. And there's a little bit of custom code here that we need to add to our page. So if we go ahead and copy this script here, we can move back to the edit screen on our page. And right now I just have the short code of Pi Calendar. Let's go ahead and click the add after button here. So that way we can get to the next block and we'll type custom HTML. And then we'll just paste in that script. We can see right here, this is what we'd actually need to modify to make the calendar load into a different month. Right now it's set to July 1st of 2024. So we'll go ahead and update that. And now when we refresh on the homepage, you can see that our calendar begins in July as opposed to the current month, which happens to be March. So this is very simple and this little custom HTML block will allow you to add basic JavaScript. You can also add HTML and CSS in here as well. But there's another type of custom code you're going to come across in many different tutorials. And one of those, for instance, will look like this. You can see that there's this function that says add filter. And this is just one example of how custom functions can look but they're all going to follow this kind of similar trend where there's a name, there's some parameters, and then there's some closing tags at the very end. Now we can't just take these and dump them into our custom HTML block from before. They just won't work that way. So what we would need to do in this case is add it to our themes functions.php file. So if we were to go back to our WordPress admin panel and I go to appearance and themes, we can take a look that I have a child theme installed. What this means is that I can add custom code to this child theme that still applies to our parent theme. The benefit here being that when the parent theme updates, it will wipe out any custom changes applied to the parent, but not the child theme. So you wanna make sure that if you're gonna be adding content to your themes functions.php, that you're doing it on a child theme. In the case of Generate Press, they offer a free child theme that you can download from their support area. And many other themes offer a child theme as well. So what I wanna do is back in my WordPress admin panel, I'm going to go down to the theme file editor section. First thing we wanna do is just double check that the theme to edit we've currently selected as Generate Press Child. We'll just select that even though we were already here just to be doubly sure. And what we'll wanna do is go to theme functions. Now we can go ahead and paste in that other sample snippet like we can see here. And if we update this, then in the case of Pi Calendar, it's going to remove some text from a specific short code that in our case is called Pi Cal Info. Now the functions that you would put in here are going to vary wildly in terms of complexity and use cases. So what you put in here will vary heavily depending on what you're doing on your website. If for some reason you're using a theme that doesn't support functions.php, which is very unlikely, but in that case, you can also add a free plugin from the WordPress repository called Code Snippets. So if we go ahead and install this, we'll activate it as well. And what we can see is under snippets, we can go to the add new area. And this is going to allow us to paste in that function exactly as we did in our functions.php file. We could simply give this a description, remove prepend text from PyCal info, because that's exactly what this particular function is doing. And we can save changes and activate. Don't be like me and forget to give your snippet a title. So we'll go ahead and save our changes. Now, if we go back to the all snippets area, we can see that our remove PyCal info prepend text is now applying as well. Keep in mind that we won't actually want this to exist in both places. I have it now in my themes functions.php and in code snippets, you'll wanna choose one or the other. When using code snippets, we can also add that same script where we changed what month the calendar loads on here into code snippets as well. So if for some reason you don't use the Gutenberg editor, you can also get that ability as well. So what we could do here is in our snippets, we would go to add new, Let's give this a title of load Pi calendar in future month. We're gonna change the tab here to content instead of the functions area. We'll go back to this screen here. And again, we'll copy this code. 
we'll pop this in. And then there's a couple of things you need to pay attention to here. So this is where that script is actually going to load. And in our case, we want this code to load after our Pi calendar has loaded. So we wanna go ahead and select this. But depending on what you're doing with the code, it may need to load beforehand, so in the head section, or potentially only when this particular short code that the plugin provides you is present. Again, in our case, we want this to load late on the page. So we're gonna go ahead and save and activate this change. And now if we go refresh our calendar, then that's going to show up in July, 2024. One other key note here is that when we use this code snippets approach, we're not actually configuring where this loads. It's going to exist everywhere across our site. So this would apply to every instance of PyCalendar, or if you're changing code for some other plugin, it's going to apply everywhere that plugin exists across your entire site. Whereas the setup that we looked at before where we were adding the custom HTML block to our page means that that code would only actually apply on this particular page and nowhere else. So all of these options have various pros and cons depending on what you need to do, but no matter what you're actually trying to achieve, what I've shown you in this video will allow you to add the custom code to your site that you need. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop a comment below, and of course, check out PyCalendar at the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.